Hello and welcome. This is Randy with Excel for Freelancers and welcome to Task Manager Part 3. In this part, I've got a ton of brand new features to show you, including multi-staff scheduling. We also have single click selection change, scheduling update. We have drag to increase or decrease duration of a task. We also have a single click checkbox to mark as completed and of course completion status bar at the top i've got so much to show you can't wait let's get started all right thanks so much for joining us today on part three of the task manager from your suggestions your ideas and your comments i have put together a host of great solutions and i can't wait to show you each and every one of them the only way that i can get all these features in to show you in a reasonable amount of time is to do them before and I'm going to show you every step. So they've all been completed, but I'm going to walk you through every single step. I know you love to watch me program, create bugs and make lots of mistakes, but well, I'm sure there'll be a few mistakes in this one. But of course, I'm going to create them from scratch from you almost every week. But this one so much to show you. I had to do it before, but I'm going to show you every step. You will not miss a thing. So I promise you that I always want to give you the utmost value on each and every training and if you do appreciate these trainings i create them each and every tuesday for you i only ask just a few things from you and they're very easy to do i just ask that you subscribe to my channel and make sure you click on notifications leave a comment below i respond to each and every comment whether you have ideas suggestions or just want to say thanks i always love to hear from you so i really appreciate that i answer them each and every morning and like this video that's going to let youtube know to show you in the algorithm to show my videos and that's going to really help me moving forward so i appreciate all of that and i love the fact that you're learning excel that's fantastic and in fact if you want one hundred of these workbooks go ahead and click the link down below i've got a brand new just 37 dollars and soon i'll have 150 of them but we'll get into that soon but i want to let you know that that really helps support us and keep these videos for free and the training free because i create these comprehensive solutions so i want to do that and show you that let's get started on the training i've got so much to show you but i want to get started right away so let's just do a little bit of review of all the features that i'm going to show you we have this week so when you click this week it's going to show that I have the ability to now increase the schedule just by doing that and you'll notice did you see I didn't click the update all we have to do is move this and then it automatically updates just by selecting that so we've got it and also works for reducing if we want to reduce an appointment down it's going to reduce that appointment so some great features notice that we have the completed on so when we mark as completed we've got a new mark completed here it's going to show automatically so if we have a scheduled here and we move it over here it's going to show automatically now it's 50 percent notice that all right so we've got so much those are just a few of the features what else do we have notice we have staff if we've assigned the staff we can put staff and it's going to reduce it just the staff we don't have any staff but let's uh clear that out and show you a staff here let's assign a staff to this we have brand new reoccurring appointments so i'm going to assign this to fred and then i want to save it and then i'm going to select fred over here and it's going to show just fred here so we've got multiple staff or no staff so that's a really great feature and did you notice that other feature when we click on edit we now have reoccurring i'm going to be able to create reoccurring appointments whether i want to create five or two or ten or whatever every day week or month and we can automatically create these new tasks as many as we want so we could create for example every single one day we can create a specific task and then create that 10 of those it's going to create automatically if we do that i'm going to show you that as well we also have of course this completion status bar at the top that's going to automatically set as soon as we complete a schedule it's going to automatically change to the percentage so we're going to show that to you i've got a few issues that i'm going to walk you through that we fixed from last time some really interesting uh, bugs that we had i'm going to show you how to do avoid those so we've got that a lot to cover so we're going to get started right away on that because i want to make sure you get and we get all those features all right so the first First feature is notice that before in the last episode we had to click update and all I did now we just have to move it and select any cell and that's a lot easier 
Now, a lot of you ask me, can we just move it and have it have it change automatically? Not really, because there is no specific on sheet event that's gonna that's gonna trigger as soon as we move something. But all we need to do is just select it, and it's gonna move it. Any select any cell, and it's gonna move. I think that's pretty pretty easy. So I like the way that that works. How do we do that? Well, that's really really simple. Let's go into the VBA code. A few of you asked, how do we get to the developer sheet here? If you don't have that available like I'm talking too fast I'm gonna slow down don't forget if I do talk too fast sometimes I get super excited feel free to go ahead and slow down this video using YouTube or Facebook you can always adjust the speed so if I get to talking too fast and I do sometimes feel free to slow it down so I just appreciate that it's an idea of helps developers tab you can find that if that's not available to you into the options and then all we need to do is just click customize your and make sure that you selected the developers tab that's gonna get you into VBA this is part three if you missed part one or part two I'm gonna include the links down below so you can feel free to check on those make sure you watch them because I really appreciate all your views and right down below also you can get this workbook for absolutely free I'm gonna include links for both email and Facebook Messenger so you can get this let's go into the visual basic and we have on our schedule we have some very basic code we had this uh, schedule refresh and we had this task update here this task update we already went over that last time we made a few changes I'm gonna go over those few changes but basically what I want to know is if the user makes any kind of a selection change anywhere inside the table from C1 to K200 then we're gonna run the task it's just that simple that means if they select this we're gonna look so if we select it and we change the location in here and we just select select any cell within that it's going to automatically update we could probably remove this update button but it's nice if somebody wants it but it does the same purpose as this update button same exact macro is going to run when we click update now we don't need to all right so we saw that that's pretty simple what is the other code that's run let's take a look at that if the, we make a change worksheet change remember this is selection change when the user just needs to make a selection but what about when we make an actual change this is based on c2 what is c2 that's the staff let's take a look at that i've got a drop down list of staff and inside the admin i've now added a list of staff so we can see that we have a staff list and have connected it to a dynamic named range let's take a look at that into the formulas name manager I'm going to use offset now I've created one called staff when we tab over that it's going to have the dancing ants around all that and how do we get that we're going to use offset we're going to use offset we're going to start at g10 that's going to be our first cell but what is our last cell well what we're going to do is we're going to count based on all the text inside that using count a so we're going to count all the cells from g10 through g29 and it's going to determine how many cells have been filled in this case it's just four so that is going to be the number of rows the number of columns is just one here so with one column and four rows that is automatically going to set our named range and that means as we add values in here it's going to automatically change so when we add another value and we take a look into the formulas and the name manager and we go back into staff and now we see that the dancing ants encompass dave and that is the same named range that i have used on the scheduling screen in this data validation so when we click data validation here click on data validation we see it's staff we only want to allow staff or we can use nothing we can enter so now Dave becomes a part of it and there's no nothing scheduled for Dave but if I do want to schedule for something Dave all I need to do is highlight it and click add a task and then Dave's automatically going to be set here just set a test and then we can just set an in process give it a category give it a priority and then click save and now automatically Dave's got himself a brand new task very very simply notice how it's zero percent it's not completed but as soon as I mark it complete it's going to be completed we're gonna get into that but let's focus on the all staff so I'm gonna clear that out and we'll see that all staff we do have conflicts here we haven't allowed for that yet we'll see if we can get to that soon but if not you can also program it what does that mean and that means that uh, if tasks overlap you may or may not want to allow that that depends on you so if you want to allow them especially with multiple staff you can or you can't so it's, sometimes it's kind of nice that's where the um, transparency comes in so if you have a task that's overlapping notice how that transparency is kind of helpful right we can see what's under that a little bit and if you want to change the transparency of something like that which is all you need to do is just change the original look so for example if we were to change that to a lighter transparency we can format this shape and then we just go into the fill right and we change the transparency so if we want a larger transparency we could and as soon as we refresh the week notice that it's going to change but that's not really helpful it's too but it gives you an idea 
All right, I keep this in mind. I'm going to fix this before I send it out to you. I'm going to fix this. Notice how there's an extra shape that's being created. There's multiple extra shapes. So I'm going to fix that. There's just a little bug there. We don't need those multiple shapes. So I'll keep that in mind. We don't need that. And uh, all right, so let's uh, change the transparency back to where it was. I think it was at 15%. We can do that from here or here. More fill colors, a few different places that we can do that. Let's change it back. I think it was about 15%. That's where I want it. Okay, and then all we need to do is refresh previous week or next week. We can also click refresh. That would work too. And uh, okay, so now, but the transparency is kind of nice. So again, let's take a look at another feature we've added because I've added so many. How do we do this? Here's a really nice feature. How do we drag this up and then automatically have it update? In fact, it's easier than you think. I've done it with only three or maybe four lines of code. So let's take a look at that. Let's put it on a separate row and then we'll focus just on this task here. Okay, so for now it's basically we're set up until 7.15 from 6 a.m. to 7.15. Right, right now it's an hour and a half, but what if we wanna make it a two hour appointment? Well, we could just drag it up, up and then it's set. That's all we have to do. So how do we do that? Well, that's on update. Remember, now we can use selection change to update. So let's go into that macro and take a look at that. And so back into the developer sheet, into Visual Basic, and we're gonna focus on task update. So here, here's some changes that I've made. Check for, so just four lines, actually just really two lines of code. We're wrapped around an if statement. That's all that we need to do. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, so check for increase or decrease task duration. How do we do that? Well, the first thing what we, we wanna do is we wanna measure the current height. I need to know if the current height the current height, for example, the current height in this, let's go, let's do something with one hour. So it's very, very simple. The current height in a one hour appointment would be just four rows, right? Four rows. So we know the current, all right, is in this case at 15 minute increments, we're looking at four, four rows. So what I want to do is I want to look at the current height. How do I know what the current height is? Well, the current height, I can measure the current height. I can also look inside the tasks. And for this particular, for example, this particular one, we're looking at uh, May 21st. That's new hire review so if we look into the tasks and we see that is also task number let's move over so we can see what task that is task number 1112 so we look at 1112 right here we can see that is 6 a.m. and it's a one hour duration so we know so what I need to do is I need to measure this one hour duration if the current height of the shape is different than this one hour then we need to make the change. If it's the same, then nothing to change. So we can measure it up against the saved duration, the saved duration. So that's what I'm gonna measure it up against. For example, if I know that the height of this, the current height, let's take a look at that. The current height is one is 0.84. If 0.84 pixels, right, if that is the same as one hour, then we don't need to make the change. But if a user makes a change, then I'm gonna measure this height. I'm gonna determine based on the current height. So what I wanna do is I wanna compare the current height of the shape with the current duration. And if there's a difference there, then we should make that update based on whatever they're done. So as soon as we change it, as soon as we select something else, it's automatically done. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing we can do that comparison, right? So the first thing what I wanna do is I wanna measure the current height. Remember task ID, just to refresh your memory, task ID is the current shape that we're focused on. And we get task ID right from here in B12. So we know the current shape. So what I wanna do is I wanna measure the height of that. We can use that dot height this will measure it what if it does not equal does if it does not equal sheet two the cells of the selected row times the cell the sheet two is our schedule so we can do that we can base it on the duration rows remember the duration rows here are based in sheet three i sheet three i divided by the interval what does that mean what does that mean how do we know the duration rows Again, here's our intervals, 15 minutes. We know that. How do we know that? It's right here, right here. It's called interval and it's based on a decimal. So if I know the interval and if I know it's one hour, I want to know how many rows, right? I'm, I need to determine how many rows. So the best way to do that is if I know, now I know the interval and now I know the one hour here, it's, now it's 145, but let's say it was one hour. If I know the duration is one hour and I know the interval, so I need to get the number of rows. So how do I do that? I use a simple division. One hour divided by the 15 minute interval is gonna get us four rows. So that I know that the correct, or that the, let's just say the saved 
the saved number of rows is four rows, right? We know that in the database, it's supposed to be four rows, but has the user changed it or not? That's what we have to figure out. So now we know it's four rows, but, but four rows doesn't really help us because how do we know what one row is? So what I need to do is I need to measure one row. I need to determine what is the height of one row. And then I'm gonna multiply that times four. That's gonna give me the total height of the shape where it should be, right? The shape should be this height. But if the user has made a change, then we know we need to make that adjustment, right? So the so all we need to do is determine what the height of it one row is. Multiply that times the number of rows. So that's just what I did. I hope it's not too confusing. But I wanted so again the duration rows. We know the duration rows is the current. Let's just say it's one hour divided by let's say 15 minutes. That's going to get us four rows. Now that we have four rows, all we need to do is determine the height of that. In fact. We can just make this a lot easier actually. So we could do that. So basically it's gonna be the first row. I could update this, but basically the first row of the column through the second row plus the duration rows minus one. So basically we're measuring the rows. We could measure any row. We could just take the row. Since all the rows are the same height, we could use any row. All we need to do is determine the height of four rows, four rows. So in this case, we could do the current row plus the duration row, which is four minus one which is three right so if we're taking the current one plus three so basically this is going to determine four rows so this is going to determine the current height of the saved this right here is the current height so now that's based on the saved task the saved task so if the current height of the shape is different than our saved based on the current rows, then we need to make the change. So how do we do that? Well, we can do that through this line of code. Then we know there's a difference. So if they're not the same, then we can make the change. Then we say sheet three, I am the task. So then I wanna get the new duration. I wanna put that new duration right here. Take the new duration, I'm gonna put the new duration in I, column I, and whatever our task row is, that new duration is gonna go here. So how do we calculate that new duration? Again, what I wanna do is I'm going to take, I wanna figure out what is the height of the current shape, the current height. I need to know that the, that's the height that the user made the change. And I'm gonna determine that, what is the height? I wanna know the number of rows that they've changed it to. So how do I do that? If the current height divided by, why don't I divide it by the height of just one row? So, and what I wanna do is I wanna surround it in integer because I don't want decimal values. So I'm gonna surround this, this is gonna get this whole number. So I'm gonna take the current height of the shape and I'm gonna divide it by the height of just one row. And then I'm gonna add one, that's gonna get us because we've subtracted one here, so we need to add one here. So that is going to get us the number of rows. This is gonna get us the number of rows. The current height minus the height of, excuse me, divided by the height of one row plus one, this will get us the number of rows. So for example, if they They've changed it to an hour and a half and our current height is this base and our current height is going to be six times the height of a single row or five times plus one plus one so now it'll be five times plus one so that's going to get us six if i multiply that times the interval it's going to get us the current time remember so if i have six right if i know it's six six times the interval is going to get us the exact time of the new appointment, the new task. Then what I want to do is I just want to format that. So I've wrapped this in format and that's going to get us how we update the duration. That's it. That's all we need to do. And all I need to do is we've already defined the duration rows here, but that's based on the original. So now all I need to do is update the duration rows to whatever we've placed in I. That's all I have to do. Everything else takes care of the cell because we now we have an updated duration row. So again, when we set the height, when we set the height, it's going to automatically set the height based on the new duration rows. So that's it. I know it's a little bit confusing, but make sure you download this and walk through every step. Slow down the video, go to it a few times. Again, let me go over a few because it's a little bit confusing. So basically, all we're going to do is we're going to compare the height of the current shape with the whatever's in this in this case it was here whatever it is there if there's a difference then we're going to determine the height divide it by the height of one row and that's going to determine how many rows we're going to multiply that number of rows 
times the interval and that's going to get us the exact time so if i change this automatically select another cell it's going to update automatically notice it went up a little bit higher there i let it fix that notice if if it goes up a little bit too high you can bring it down a little bit but i'm gonna i should set a limit to that it cannot go less than four so i'm gonna fix that because we don't want it to go over whatever the first time is so that's just a slight update i'll make sure i add that and before you download it don't worry about that or you can set the limit all we would need to do is just set the limit on update want to make sure that the row the top right here's the top here's the top we want to make sure that this is not less then the schedule row, we want to make sure the schedule row is not less than five. So if we do that, so we can probably do that right now. Let's why don't we do that just in case we're going to run to make sure if SC row is less than five, then SC row equals five. Okay, easy enough. There we go. So now let's just make sure that if we somebody puts it a little bit too high, it'll automatically go down to the bottom. I like that much better. Okay, so I like that much better. It's now it's automatically set. So now there's a minimum. Okay, very good. And we'll also set the time to make sure the time is here. So now we have it. So now you understand how to drag and drop and move the schedule. It's a really, really cool feature. I'm really happy. I will be doing schedules like this in the future. Maybe I'll do a Gantt chart like this to where it's completely different. I've done it on a cell base, but I think this would be really cool. To be able to drag and drop projects like in a Gantt start would be really, really super powerful in, in this manner. So maybe I'm gonna get to that. And I'm also gonna fix this issue where these extra shapes get created. They're not necessary. So we're getting some extra sample shapes automatically. We don't need those. I'll make sure to fix that issue before I send it out. Okay, so what else do we have this? We've also got this week. Let's show you this week. That's a really great feature and it's very, very simple. So basically what we need to do is I need to put in whatever the current Monday is in here. And if you don't want your day to start on Monday, I'm gonna show you how to choose any day of the week. So basically what it is is the current date and then I need to figure out what, what our current day is and subtract the number of days to get to the Monday. That's all I really need to do. And then refresh the schedule. So how do we do that? Well, that's in the update. And let's take a look at that. That would be in the schedule refresh macros. We went over previous week and we went over next week, but now I've added something called this week. So again, this is super, super simple. All I need to do is change E4. Once I change E4 to any date, so let's just say I change this to May 4th, right? All I need to do is then refresh the schedule. I guess I don't have a really refresh button on here. It's gonna automatically change. So it's super simple. All we need to do is this and then run refresh. I could probably add a refresh button here, but everything we do is gonna refresh. So. So that's no problem. So all I really need to do is change E4. So how do we do that? Well, E4 is gonna be equal to the current date minus the weekday of the current date based on whatever the Monday is. So we're gonna use the weekday function in VBA. Now, if you want your day to start on Sunday or Monday, all you need to do is just change this to VB Sunday, VB Tuesday, or whatever you want, plus one. We also need to want, add one for the current day, and that is going to get us our Monday. One single line of code, very, very easy. And then, of course, we just need to refresh the schedule. Once we've updated the dates, then, of course, those dates are gonna be put in our advanced filter here in tasks, and, of course, it's gonna be greater than that greater than or equal to the Monday and then less than or equal to that Sunday and then pending. And pending, we don't want any pendings on that. Pending, of course, are gonna be in our schedule. So, of course, when we want a pending, we just drag it over here and now we can click update or anything like that, it's gonna be pending. So, okay, great, I'm glad I got to show that to you. This week is a super easy, easy feature. What else do we have? Staff, can't wait to show you staff. Let's go over some staff. Again, we went to the staff, but let's take a look at how we get only the staff and that's also part of our advanced filter. Now notice that we have last week we had status but we've added staff, recurring, re frequency, quantity, and frequency. So we have all of that and I'm going to show you all that walk you through it. But we also have the staff column. So when we determine what we want to show, what I want to do is I want to determine if the user has selected the staff here. And if so, I want to make sure to put that staff in here. We need to update this. Notice it says staff, staff. Let's put a staff in there. Fred, my favorite guy. Okay, so now we have Fred. And if I want to show Fred, I only want Fred to show up. I only want that. So how do we do that? How can we get Fred to show up? It's part of our advanced filter. So we go into tasks. All I need to do is take Fred's name 
put it inside the criteria here and then run our advanced filter. So let's just take a look at that on that update and that's on schedule refresh. So I'm gonna put that up here, schedule refresh. Here's the macro we're focused on. So the only updates that I have for this one is we're now going to take the staff and we're gonna place them inside before we run our advanced filter, before we run our advanced filter. So all we need to do again is take whatever is in c2 is where our staff and if it's not empty c2 is, then i'm going to take whatever is in c2 and place it right in v3 of sheet 3. basically we're going to check i'm going to put in v3 put whatever's here only if it's not empty only if the schedule is not empty otherwise we should clear it out right otherwise if it is empty and we want to refresh we should clear it out right so we also so how do we do that well again that's just with the rest of the line of the code otherwise else v3 clear the contents so we want to make sure that if we're going to run an advanced filter on this we want to make sure that this is empty and all that and then our results are going to be right here so that means if we put in fred only those staff with fred for that week so for the more we add for fred the more it will show up all right so that's pretty pretty simple that's all we need to do the advanced filter i've just increase the advanced filter I've increased keep in mind when you make changes or add you want to make sure to increase so now our row is going to go to and now our criteria is in s2 through v3 our criteria is going to cover here s2 all the way through v3 we want to make sure to include the criteria we've added this criteria and then the results are going to come all the way through aa and all the way to a and that's where our results are going to go so and that's going to come right here aa through an so our results are here that is our advanced filter everything else is the same that we covered last week except there's a few addition and now i've added status and staff to our to our task id so notice it has status and staff so we have both of those and i think i got an update notice how it said staff there i'm gonna now it says status and staff. I think it said staff. There's a quick update I'm going to make on that. But as soon as we select it, it changes. So let me just figure that out. I think that's an issue. So it says status and staff on refresh. It shouldn't say staff. It should say the actual staff. Let's go ahead and update that. That's going to be based on our results where we want our staff on AK. AK, that's where it should be. It should be AK right here. So we want our staff to show up. Sheet 3, this is our for our results. And then AJ. Okay, good, so that's gonna fix that little issue there. So because we're pulling our data from here, right? We want our staff here, and our status, and our staff to, from AJ and AF, so that's fine. Now when we go next week and previous week, it's gonna show up, status complete, Fred. Okay, so we've got that, and make sure to save it. So oh, those are the new information that we added there, and again, we can easily simply add it. So let's add some reoccurring. Now we understand how we add staff. So just wanted to update you. So now I've added the status and then a brand new row and then the staff and those are coming from our results AJ and AK. So that's time name description. So we've added that also. Okay, what else? How about reoccurring appointments? Let's take a look at that. What if I want to add the same appointment all every day of the week? Let's say for the five days of the week at how would I do that? Let's take a look. I'm gonna click on let's say I want a one hour appointment every day so I'm gonna click the add a task here that's moved over a little bit too far to the right there and I want to create a new task let's say coffee meeting and I want to have that at 6 a.m. every day it's already set at 6 a.m. let's say we're gonna have that scheduled and then I'll give it a category call it uh, personal and then a priority of medium so now what I want to do is let's just give it a coffee with Okay, so we've got a coffee with Bob. I want to make it reoccurring. So I'm going to select this and I want to make it every single day for one day. And I want to create four new tasks. So I want to create this one plus four brand new ones, right? This one plus four one coffee meeting. Okay, so how do we do that? And if I save that, now it's saved automatically. This one hour meeting automatically. So how did we do that? How do we get that to save automatically like that? Let me go in and show you just what we did. We've made a few updates. So let's start with the form that we've made the update into the task form. And we're going to view the object first. And let's take a look at some of the object properties. So I'm going to click on the properties here and we'll focus on that. So we've got some brand new ones. We have a reoccurring and this is called recur option. 
So that's called recurring options. It's going to either be true or false. I have another one called frequency quantity. This is the number of days, weeks, or months that we want it to frequency. And then also I have the frequency. Again, this is days, weeks, or months. This is the number of days, weeks, or months. And this is the days, weeks, or months. And this is going to be based on the drop down list. What is that drop down list? Well, that's going to be based on the frequency there. And it's going to be called this frequency here. And I've called this frequency. So this is a named range that I've created, just a static named range. It won't grow. It's called days, weeks, and months. Of course, you can update this accordingly if you want. But we have that. So now what I want to do is when I initialize, I want to make sure that this drop down list is equal to that frequency. And then I want to create, I have another one called new task quantity. How many new tasks do I want to create with that? Well, this is going to allow us to do that. So that's all I need to do. Then basically what I'm going to do is when I save this, I'm going to check to see if all of these values are accurate. If they are, if they contain, if they're not blank, then what I want to do is I want to create reoccurring forms based on, based on all the information here based on all the information here I'm gonna create brand new appointments so how do we do that well that's on save and let's get into the code on that and let's just one more thing before we get to that I'm gonna view the code and I just want to show you some updates there's also a fix that we did here there was an issue here and I'm gonna show you that in just a moment I don't want to forget that it was a it's an it was a difficult issue to fix but I but I fixed it because I want to show you some things that you could have based on those times okay so the few things is now this additional what we're doing is I added a staff row source, which is staff. So that's brand new. That's the row source based on the named range staff. So that's going to create that drop down list of all the staff. And I have the frequency here. So now the frequency, this drop down list, the source of those rows, that means the drop down list is going to be equal to the named range. So we've added that in as well. Okay, so we've added that in. Let me just go over this with you right now. We're on the screen. Basically, there was an issue when we select a time. Let me just comment this out and I'm going to show you the issue. Okay. And I'm going to comment this all out. And then, okay. So I'm going to comment this out, this all out. So I want to show you the issue based on two specific times. Excel has a as an issue with 6, 6 a.m. when in user forms and specific. So let's select on 6 a.m. If I click, uh, let's call it uh, add a task. And if you'll notice here, let's see, 6 a.m. Notice how when you click 6 a.m. it said 12, 25 a.m. Why does that happen? I mean, the times are right. It works on every other time. What if I click 6.15? That works fine. 6.30 works fine. What about 12? 12, there's a problem. So these two have issues. And Excel is seeing, here's another one, 12.05. You see that? So what's the problem here if you run into this? 6 a.m. is also 0.25. A full day is one. So 6 a.m. is a quarter of a day. So when I put in 0.25, Excel sees that, that 0.25 as minutes instead of days. It's just an anomaly. I don't know exactly why, really. So basically, Excel is not, it works fine for the rest of the time. So even if you format it properly, it still isn't going to work. It sees it as basically 12.25 a.m., which is simply incorrect. And the same thing with 12 p.m. here. 12 p.m., Excel is not looking this at the right place. When you click 12 p.m., it's saying 12 p.m. is 12.05 a.m. It's, it's basically thinking that it's a five-minute increment, and it's not. So those are two issues with time. So how do we do that? Well, basically what we want to do is we want to force Excel to say, if you choose 6 a.m. 0.25, 0.25 is 6 a.m. If it's 0.25, make sure the format is 6 a.m. Or if it's in another increment, 12 a.m., make sure it is. So how do we do that? Well, that's just inside the code here. So I've commented it all out. Let's go back into the code because I know we need to knock this out. So basically, if the task form, if the time is 0.25, then then make the value 6 a.m. specifically make it 6 a.m. Or what if it's 0.5, a half a day, 12 p.m. If it's half a day, so Excel is going to see this as five minutes, and it's just not right. It's going to see this as 25 minutes. It's just not correct. So what we have to do is we have to tell Excel explicitly that if it's 0.5, make it 12 p.m. So I've done that throughout the application and every change and every update. So I've done it on the schedule time format. And basically what we've done, and my friend Bent here, Bent, one of our students, one of our great students, he also helped me out with this. I did the research and he figured out the 12 p.m. So it was great. So thank you, Bent, for we worked on that together. But basically I did have to research this because I honestly I didn't know why this was happening. So it took a bit of research. So I figured it out. It's just an anomaly, kind of a bug in Excel. But that way it worked around. So, and it only seemed to happen in user forms too. So we're going to 
set this time format in this macro so that every time we update the schedule time, whether whether it's after update or whether we change it, we're going to run this macro just to make sure. So that covers that. I'm glad I covered that. So we interrupted ourselves because we were also in this and the recurring option click we're going to update that i may update this so when we click the recurring option this is going to make it enable or disable some of the fields in the recurring we may want to add that but i've commented it out so far okay so we had just finished up the viewing the objects so basically what that was if i click here and maybe disable these fields that was an idea okay so we're, we've now understand the fields based on reoccurring but let's see how do we do that how do we make that happen that's in the save right because we're saving that task so when we save that task we want to check for reoccurring and if it's a reoccurring option i want to also create specific tasks based on that any number of tasks based on what the user has set so we can do that right here i've added some code called check for reoccurring. Oh, I've also added this, the staff, but these are pretty self-explanatory. So I've added all of these values, which is going to add that to our uh, tasks here. So basically, when we save it, we're going to now we're going to add the status, the staff, the recurring. We're going to add all these status was there last week. So we're going to add these four fields. So that's all that those lines of code does right here. Pretty self-explanatory. K L M N. Okay. So moving on. Next what I want to do is I want to check for recurring, but I want to make sure that the user has filled in all the fields. The fields that we went over, we went over new task quantity, that field in the form frequency quantity we the frequency itself so if those three fields are not blank then we know the user has actually wanted a reoccurring task so then what we want to do is we want to put those reoccurring tasks inside some new variables and i've created some new variables to help us and let's just go over these the task quantity this is the number of tasks that we need to create the frequency right how often do we want to create it we also have the new task how many new tasks we want right we're gonna to have to loop through all we're gonna to have to loop through all the tasks we're gonna go from one to all the way if they want five new tasks but in one to five so we're gonna loop through all of them and create a new task based on that so we need to keep track of it we'll use the task quantity to keep track as we loop through it I also want to know what row the new reoccurring task is on and I want to know the number of days if we need to add one day or 10 days or 30 days. So we need to know how many add days. And I also want to know if we're going to adding months. What if we want it once a month? So we need to know how many months to add. If the user has opted in to add months and not days or weeks, then we need to know the months. And also I want to know the task number as long because I need to get the next task number. Why do I need to know that? Well, what I want to do is I want to know the next task number. If I'm going to create a new task, I need to know the next one is 135 and so on and so forth. And I need to create so we need to create them because I notice how I just created this coffee meeting and it created the one we saved plus the four additional ones. So we have to get those two. So making sure that we do that. So we need to keep track of all of that. And we'll do that with just a few lines of code. So let's go over that. So check for reoccurring tasks. That's what we're doing now. We want to make sure that none of the reoccurring fields are blank because if one's a blank, we can't create it. So we want to make sure the user has entered those. We're going to set the frequency quantity. Quantity is task form frequency quantity. This is the task frequency quantity. Right? What is that again? Let me just show you that again. I want to refresh it because I don't want you get, when we view the object. This is the task. Let's go into the properties again. This is the task frequency quantity every one days or every two months or every three weeks task frequency quantity. This is the frequency. And again, this is the new task quantity. Those are the ones we're going to be focused on right now. Okay, so we went over that. So the new task quantity, we need to put that into a variable. It's going to equal the task form new class quantity new task quantity. I want to put that in a variable so we have those in variables and I also want the task frequency. Remember the frequency is a string so that's the it's going to be this is going to be the days, weeks or months. Okay, so then what I want to do is I want to know if the task frequency is days, then simply add the add days are going to be the frequency quantity. So for example, if they want it every one day, then what we're going to do is the add days is going to be one. If they want it every two days, then we're going to frequency quantity. The add days is going to be two. So we just need to know the number of days to keep adding. If they want to create it, let's say every week, we would have one plus seven. So what about 
what about if they say every one week, then we would add days would be seven. So let's say if it is weeks, what if they have chosen every one week? Then the add days is gonna be the frequency quantity. Let's say if they've added one times seven. Therefore, it would be every seven days. But let's say they want it every two weeks. Right? Every two weeks, that would be two times seven, so it would be every 14 days. But what if they've chosen months? Then I want the add months, the brand new variable here, add months, going to be the frequency quantity. So I know whether we're going to be adding days or adding months. And there's going to be two different formulas for both of these. So basically, days or weeks is going to have pretty much the same. We just need to know the number of days to add. Add months will be very different. Okay, so then what I want to know is the reoccurring task row. I need to know the first available row. What is the first available row? We're going to use end xlap. We're going to determine the first available row. That's going to be our reoccurring row. And that's going to grow. So at every task we add, we're going to grow it one more, one more. So we need to know the first available row. In this case, it's 38. So we can do that with sheet three, which is our task sheet, A99 and xlap plus one. That's going to get us our first available task row for our reoccurring task. Next up, I want the new task date. The new task date is going to be the schedule date. This is the schedule date of our current. Remember, this is the current, the one that they've saved. What is that? That would be, let's take a look at what we what we have here. That would be this date right here. Our schedule date is right here. Schedule date. That's going to be the starting point, right? We know we need to know whether we're going to add days or days or months, of course, but we need a starting date. So we've got that as our reoccurring date. Then it's going to grow. Okay, so that's our starting point is that date right here. Okay, so back into the code. So we know our recurring new task date is our schedule date. It's going to start. This is the initial task date. So if we want it every week, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add seven to this date. Okay, so the task number is, what is the task number? I need to know the next task number. How do we know that? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna determine the value of, what is the last row with a value in column B? If it's 135, then I know that our next number is gonna be 135. If the last one's 134, I know the next one's gonna be 135. All I need to do is determine the last value and add one. And we can do that right here. For the task number is, Task number is equal to sheet three, B, remember column B is our task number, and X up. This is gonna get us our last one. What is the value of that last cell? In this case, it's 134. We add one and then we know our new task number. Okay, so we, now that we have our task number, we have our task date, we can start our loop for the task quantity. Remember, we don't know how many we're gonna keep. We're gonna start it at one, but we're gonna go all the way to the new task quantity. We need to know how many the user has changed. Whether they wanna create us four different appointments or four different tasks or 10 or whatever, we need to loop through that. So the first thing what I wanna do is I want to take our current task. Now we've just saved the task up here. We've saved it, and so we've saved it all up here. So it's all saved here in the information. The task row, the entire task has been saved here. So what I wanna do is I wanna copy whatever's in this column. Let's just say we made a test. We copied this first task row, this copy. This is the task row here. I wanna copy all that and I'm gonna paste it right in the first available row. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna update the date here accordingly. And I'm gonna update the, actually I'm gonna copy probably just this here. Then I'm gonna update the task number because that has to be unique. And I'm gonna update the task ID because that has to be unique. So we're gonna copy everything and then make three changes. We're gonna make a change to the date, the number, and the ID. So we can do that in these lines of code. So copying down. So the first thing we wanna do is sheet three C. Remember we're starting with C through N equals, this is our reoccurring task row. Our reoccurring task row is the new row below. Our reoccurring task row in this case would be right here. Equals, so again, C through N equals whatever our original, maybe this one, right? So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy this and we're gonna paste it right down here like this. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna determine the next one, which is 135. Then I'm gonna, with VBA, I'm gonna take the words task and then plus this and put it right here. That's what we're gonna be doing inside VBA, just so you, we can walk through it step by step. So again, inside, but I need to know, are we adding days or month? That's very important. So the first thing we're gonna do is copy from C through N, just what I told you here, from our original task row to our new task row. Then I need to change the date. But what is the date? I need to know if it's either days or months. So if the add days does not equal zero, remember we've defined it up here. If it's not equal to zero, that means we're adding days. Then the new task date is equal 
to the new task day. Remember, it's going to loop, keep going, plus the add day. So what that's going to do is going to create a brand new task date. We've defined our new task date right here based on the schedule. But this is our new date. So our, now we have our new date plus the add dates. Otherwise, otherwise what? Otherwise, it's months. Otherwise, we're adding months. So how do we add months? Then we're going to use something called date add. Date add, we're going to add based on months. Months, M is for months. Months, D would be for days. But I want to add months. And what are we adding? We're adding the months, the number of months to add. Basically, this is what we've defined up here, the number of months to add. And we're going to add those months to what? We're going to add them to the new task date. So we're taking this date. We're either adding months or days. So this line of code, now we have our new task date. We've defined our new task date. So all I need to do is take that brand new new task date and put it right here inside here. Then I need to update this and this. So with the three lines of code, we have our new date, putting it here, putting our new task number in here. So we can do that with the next three lines of code. Sheet 3A is going to be the task plus the task number. That's going to set us our new ID. The next one in B is going to set us our tax number. And then the next one in G is going to set us our new tax date. That does That's everything we need to do, create that brand new task. But now I need to increment the row. So if, now I need to know the next task row is going to be here. We just filled in this one. So we need to increment the row one. And we also need to increment the task ID. So we can increment both of those here. So the recurring task row equals the recurring task row plus one. That's going to increment the new task row. And this is going to increment the new task number. New task number. Okay, so now we have the task number. We've incremented both. And we'll just loop. So we can do this loop for as many times as we want. And that's going to inc automatically increase the task. That's all we have to do. And I need to update this. The schedule refresh. No, it's, notice how it didn't refresh when I first did that. I just need to comment that out. Okay, so that's it. That's all we need to do. Everything else is pretty much the same, except there's just a little bit, except in this one, again, I've added status and staff onto this one. That's all I've done. So everything else is the same. Let's do that again. Let's show that again. I want to show you exactly how we do that. Let's go into the week. Let's go into the next week. And uh, let's let's do in this week here, let's add a, a new schedule time. We'll do the same thing. We'll, maybe we'll do it every Monday. Or yeah, we'll do it every day so you can see it on a week. So I'm going to create a new task. In fact, let me move these buttons over here. They should not be all the way over there too far over. We can't see them. Okay, so we're going to create a new task based on, let's say, 8.15 a.m. I'm going to create a brand new task, adding a task. Let's just call this lunch with Fred. And we'll give it a task of scheduled. And uh, the category of, let's say, personal and uh, medium. Okay, so I want to give it a reoccurring. And then I'm going to give it every, let's say, one day. Again, we'll do one day one more time. And create the new task. Okay, great. So that's going to create, let's say, four new tasks. Save that, and now it's going to update. Notice it updated there. Now it's created one and then four new ones. All right, let's show you how we mark this complete. If I click on here, it's going to mark appointment complete automatically. So it's very easy to mark complete. Now all we need to do is add the schedule. So again, what I've done here is just simply added a check mark box here, and I've still have the same edit group, but I've just added to that, and I've signed a brand new macro called task mark complete. Let's get into that macro and show just how we did that. It's here into the task macros and it's called mark complete. Again, we're going to set the task rows long and the task ID as string. We're going to focus on sheet two. That is our schedule. And if B2 is empty, we can't do anything else. Remember, B2 is we're focused here. That is our task select a task. If that's empty, there's nothing we could do. We'll just exit out of the sub. But assuming that it's not empty, then we can assign that to the task ID and the task row to whatever's in B3. Once I have the task row and task ID, it's very easy to work with because all I need to do is I know that we're going to focus on J, right? That's our status. And I know what to put in here. I'm going to put complete. But actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to put whatever is in here. That way it's dynamic. Whatever's in I7 of sheet one, which is our admin, I'm going to take the word complete from here and I'm going to place it right in here into J and whatever the row is. So it's very, very simple. There's also a little kind of a strange issue. It tends to move up. So I'm going to increment the top a little bit. But again, task ID is B2. So sheet three, that's our tasks, J and the task row equals sheet one I7. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it down just very slightly one down below. If I don't, it tends to kind of move up. Watch what happens when I don't. It kind of messes up sometimes so just keep that in mind if i don't have that and i do it tends to go above notice that just kind of dropped it 
So it tends to just move up, but that increment will handle that. It just kind of moves it down very slightly and keeps to make sure that that doesn't happen. So increment one will help that. It just kind of moves it down and moves it a little bit below. So that'll take care of that. So no problem. So now as soon as we have that market is complete, again, if you want to, of course, make it scheduled again, just click on the scheduling and click save. And now marketing complete, all we have to do is notice that it goes to 100%. If we have a new brand new appointment, or we take something that's scheduled and we move it into here, then all of a sudden you're going to see that it goes to 50%. So that is our next. How do we do that? How do we get our next uh, automated completion percentage? Well, basically what I want to do is I want to determine the number of tasks that are scheduled, the total number of tasks that are completed against the total number of tasks in a certain day. So to help us with that, I've created some additional named ranges. So let's go into that data and then I'm going to look formulas actually, name manager. Let's look at some of the named ranges. Now we have task staff which is a dynamic named range based on the number of staff we have we also have task status i think we had that before i think that's new so i've created those two named ranges and we also have task date so we're going to those are going to help us as we create a formula so basically what i want to do is i want to determine all the tasks scheduled for a specific date and if they're complete or not i want to get a percentage of them. But it's a little bit trickier than that because if we're showing a specific staff, I want to know it for that staff. For example, let's take a look at this. So here we're on only Fred's schedule and we're only focused on Fred's appointments. But what if we clear that out? Now we're focused on everything. So it's going to be based on everything. So the formula is going to be based on whether we have a staff or not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the formula and I want the percentage to show up here. And then I'm going to use conditional formatting for that. And what I really like about the schedule, notice how it's a little bit wide here. What I really like about it, it's so dynamic. All I need to do is just shrink those rows up a little bit. And the shapes, even when we refresh, it's going to automatically shape. So next week, everything automatically updates. I really like the flexibility. So you can just easily create, a, let's go a little bit wider on this. Okay. We also have to update the buttons. Those are not going to help us. Okay, so now that we have everything fitting in one day, I like that much better. So basically, how do we get that? So basically, we need to test for the conditions. I need to know if C2 is empty. If C2 is empty, we're going to base it on all of the tasks, regardless of the staff, and how many are complete and how many are not complete. But if there's a staff that's been selected, I only want to know only based on those staff, only based on specific staff. So how do we do that? Well, that's just with a formula. So let's look over that formula. And again, we're going to base it on if C2 is empty. And if C2 is empty, what do I want to do? I want to count all the tasks regardless of them if they're completed. So how do I use that? I'm going to use a count if, and we're going to base it on the count if is the date is E4. Notice E4 is the date. And we're going to count the status. What is the status on admin I7? So that's based on the status on I7. I want to know if they're completed. I7 is complete. So we're going to count it based on I7. So first thing we're going to do otherwise, what do you mean otherwise? Otherwise that there means there's a staff. In this case, if there's no staff, do this. If there's staff, do this right here. So otherwise, count if the task date, E4, that's the same. But this time we're adding in staff, task staff, is equal to C2. So only count those in which the staff, because C2 is not blank. Right? So that's going to get us our count, our initial count, our count of completions, either with or without staff. So I'm going to get that number. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide that number by the total number of appointments, total number of tasks. Now, either those total number of tasks are going to be regardless of with any staff or only with staff. So again, we need an if. If C2 is blank, then we're going to count them regardless of staff. Then all I need to do is count the tasks based on the certain date, this day here. Otherwise, we're going to be basing on state. Otherwise, there's two conditions. We're going to use count ifs. Notice this is count if, just one, one condition. This is count ifs, two conditions. The task date is one condition, and then the staff is another condition. Otherwise, if there's an error, blank. So we wrap that in error. That's going to count it. So that way we have a formula that's going to count it regardless of staff or no staff. Great. So we understand how we get the 50%. Now we're counting them. But how do we get this conditional formatting? Well, that's pretty simple. All we need to do is add a conditional formatting based on a bar. So let's go into home, conditional formatting, manage rules. And we look at the conditional formatting. This is very just a simple data bar that you can create. You can add to this. And all I did is a solid fill with a color and then a little bit darker border on that. 
using context. I didn't add anything in. And there's really nothing I do. I've set the minimum and automatic. It's already set for percentages, so there's not much we really need to do. If we don't want to show the percentages, we can just click show data bar only. That's fine. I'd like to show the percentages to know how many are complete. This is going to let us know in a visual form if the tasks have been completed for the specified day or not. So if I change this to edit and I change it to scheduled or in process, it's going to automatically change it to zero. And the more we add, so, but if I drag this over, it's going to be 50%, just like that. All right, so we've covered almost everything. So what have we covered? We showed you how to fix a time issue before 6 and 12 o'clock. We've updated. Now we know how to update the schedule. On All we need to do is on selection changes, it's going to update. We've showed you how to add in staff scheduling, whether it's for specific staff or no staff. We've also shown you how to drag simple appointments based on just a single appointment. So now we can add or decrease a status time just by dragging and the vertical position of any single task. That's really cool. It's going to update automatically. I've shown you how to add something mark complete just by clicking the complete button here and how to add that in. And we've also added in reoccurring appointments, whether it's per day, per week, or per month. All right, great. I'm so glad I got to show you this series. Next week, we're going to move on to something else, something maybe really amazing, perhaps something another like a a point of sale with pictures maybe for restaurants or something like that if you have any ideas submit them down below let me know you've watched all the way to the end of this video and if you have ideas for me on that pos i would love it it's going to be really amazing very different than the original pos because this one's going to be based on pictures and it's going to be based on the touch screen so again comment below like and share thanks so much and if you want to support us I'd love to see you uh, in the mentorship program where I can help you create amazing applications and sell them for recurring income. All right. Thanks so much. Finally, we finished one in a normal hour about or slightly less. Thanks so much. Have a great week and we'll see you next week.